Hello everyone, welcome back. Right, well, I finally got it finished. You can see I've insulated and I've also put on an extra air blade at the top and a bypass between the flow and return and that's because I've got a valve system, well, a zone system with, with valves, zone valves and if both of those valves are closed then you want the pump to be able to circulate so there's a pressure bypass valve there on that. I'll just show you now in close up what I've done. Okay, at the top here you've got your flow and return coming in through the two isolator valves. The red tab is the flow. There is the pressure bypass or pressure relief valve, auto pressure relief valve. And that's because the one on the outside, uh, on the outdoor unit was actually leaking. So I had to close it off. So there is one in the hydraulic station, but I just thought if I have one there, I can I can drain it more easily than pulling the front off the panel every time. So flow and turn coming down. I've got my energy meter, Calstrop energy meter. And we're running at about seven and a half kilowatts at the minute. Heating the water. There's the filter. And there's the two zone valves. And there's the bypass. There's the bypass valve. There. So I've insulated everything with Armaflex. Um, and there's a hundred cable ties here. So don't underestimate the number of cable ties you'll need if you're insulating. And obviously I've not pulled them too tight just to keep the um, keep it nice and snug. Under here there's actually two pipes so close together that I couldn't really get separate insulation around it. So what it, I did was I put a, a little wedge of insulation in there and just closed it over. Uh, and that's because one's a flow and one's a return. If they had both been flows I probably wouldn't have worried. So yeah, that's it. Up and running. I've got a thermal camera, so I've taken some shots and uh, it's all pretty, pretty well insulated. The one thing I would say with the control centre is that because I've got a zone system, and it's a two zone system obviously, the, the controller seems to think, or seems to assume, you'll always be mixing, I guess, for underfloor heating. So when it's in heating mode, you hear, constantly hear relays clicking in and out, mixing, attempting to mix. Spoke to Valent about this and they said, look, it's, it's a flaw in the system to some degree. It is, but it is normal. So not to worry about it. The only other thing that I've noticed is that although I've got different time settings set up, you know, heating settings set up for the two zones, it seems to turn them both on together and both off together. It never seems to discriminate and say, well, time to heat zone one and time to heat zone two. It just does everything. So I don't know whether there's something wrong with my setup. I mean, I've, I've spoken to them about it and um, about the setup. I haven't spoken to them about the fact that both valves seem to be, you know, on at the same time and off at the same time. So uh, I need to check that they've given me the right, what do they call it, wiring diagram number, whatever. But I think that's correct. I think I'm set up okay, but I, who knows. Yeah, so I'll give you, I'll show you now what the outside looks like. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's going at nine kilowatts at the moment, which is its full output. It's a seven kilowatt nominal. I also plumbed in the condensate pipe, so you can see I took it down the wall. And rather than going to a soak away, I took it along, round the corner here, to a gully. And what I've noticed is that on a wet, cold, wet day, this thing gives off gallons of water. So I, uh, for me, a soak away wasn't going to work, especially under a path. So there you have it. There's the isolator, long return. The drain valves if it freezes. And you can see the bracket. So I'm pretty happy in the end. I had waited to do this video until it really got cold. Uh, today is the 10th of October. Uh, it's starting to get cold at night now, so it was about five degrees last night. I think tonight's gonna be roughly the same. So the heating has been coming on for the past couple of days. And the house is warm. 
it's not super warm but it's not cold since I installed this in late August we have been heating the water with it generally now we do have solar thermal so that has worked on on the occasions when it's been sunny um, and I haven't changed the cylinder so I'm still using the fossil fuel coil in the cylinder the heat pump is using is using that and the reason I haven't changed the cylinder is I can't find a supplier that supplies one that has a solar coil at the bottom and a fossil fuel or sorry a heat pump coil in the center which is what I need so I'll have to get one made but to date fairly happy with what I got it was fairly straightforward um, I haven't set or I haven't adjusted the the weather compensation curve yet it's set to 0.4 which is probably too low for me I'm probably going to need 0.5 or 0.6 I wanted to see how the heating went uh, before I started fiddling with that so I think I'd give it another month and see if it needs to be more aggressive and we move then to a, a 0.6 or a, yeah probably a 0.6 actually so yeah the other videos I want to do are the preparatory work that I've done for the heat pump and that was things like changing radiators, increasing insulation in the property and uh, yeah that's probably about the, the, the most of it actually. We, put a, we did also put a wood burning stove in as part of the preparation work. I'll go through that and I've, I've got one wall where I created what I call an all wall radiator so it's I've taken the radiators out of the room and one of the walls I have made my own radiator which um, I've then clad with um, some timber um, I'll go through that in more detail at some point so look hope you've enjoyed the videos any questions do let me know I'm happy to help and um, yeah tune in again for the next ones Hopefully it'll not be so long.